Okay, so I wasn't going to do a video on this today because I thought to myself, no one ever has to remove an HVAC register and relocate it. So if there's at least one of you out there, this may benefit you. So today we're going to be on the same kitchen remodel that I've been at for the last uh, two weeks. And where the cabinets, where the Lazy Susan sits, it sat on top of the old register. And being that we extended the kitchen island out, we have to relocate the... Um, the HVAC register to uh, the sliding glass door. So I'm gonna relocate it, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, and hopefully you could benefit from it. Um, this is pretty rare, but I guess it does happen. So uh, if you're curious on how to do it, we're gonna do it. All right, let's get to it. I hate working in snow. Just makes for a cold day. Yes, that is a Circle K carpet. Don't ask me. Okay, so the vent we're going to be installing is this one right here. Ooh, I just hit my head on this corner. Ow! Oh, that hurt. Okay, so what I was trying to do was show you okay. this vent that's down here. So we had to cover it with the Lazy Susan. Okay, so I already pre-measured this. I'm three inches out on the outside. Um, I wouldn't go any closer to that because then the curtain will be behind it. So I wanted it to where the airflow would come up in front of the curtain. Um, so I just used the paddle bit to go downstairs to see where I'm gonna be relocating the new uh, air register. So I just did my template three inches off of the slider. And all you do is just, you know, square it up, draw a line around it, and you're good to go. Let's go downstairs so you can see what I'm dealing with. Okay, so here's the existing vent. This is a six inch vent, all right? Um, so like I said, it's going underneath the cabinet right there. So we have to relocate it to this side of the truss. It's always a good idea to just do one drill hole so you know where you're um, gonna end up. So we clearly have at least uh, two feet here to put the new air register in, okay? So, so everything looks clear up here now. So now we can continue on with all four holes. And the reason why I do all four holes is so that way I can get my jigsaw in. You'll see that here in a minute. It just makes it for an easier uh, cutout. So, all right, so once we cut our new hole, uh, the next step is gonna be taking off this duct tape. Um, we're going to remove this. We're gonna run some elbows that go this direction and then back up. So I've got some 90 degree elbows that we'll be running. And basically it's just, um, cut to fit at that point so like I said now that we have a clear uh, cut line downstairs I'm gonna be putting a, a drill hole here here and here and by using this paddle bit it allows the jigsaw blade to rotate on these inside corners so it's just an easier cut uh, yeah, I guess you could use a circular saw to get your um, long cuts in that's fine but your jigsaw is gonna be your best tool for hitting these corners. Okay, so just trim as you go. Um, hopefully you get it right the first time, but sometimes you don't. But there you go. All right, 
all complete. Okay, so we're down in the basement now. We're back in action. Um, I'm gonna be using these extenders here. These are six inches for this air duct line that we're gonna be relocating. You never know what you're gonna find in the basement. <laughs> uh, are you looking at me? I don't know, man. It's a little creepy. Okay, so back to the video. I think this thing's moving. Uh, we also have this very expensive, high-tech HVAC tape. All right. Now, they sent Neil Armstrong to the moon with this stuff, so it works pretty well. And all you do is you just peel it tear it and this conforms to the sheet metal so that way there is no uh, air that escapes and you're getting your full CFMs up to where you need it to go. So under the current administration energy costs through the roof right now so you want to save every bit of energy you can. So tape up your duct works wherever there's a joint so that way no air escapes and you're left holding the bag. Alright so there you go. Food for thought. And I got some sheet metal screws. These are self-tappers. Ah. Little self-tappers right there. You're gonna want those because uh, these will penetrate through the steel faster or sheet metal, all right? All right, enough monkeying around, let's get to it. So instead of using our high-tech NASA tape, they use duct tape here. It's old school, it works. Uh, we're just gonna cut this, remove it. Um, there should be a couple screws in there, I think. But if not, no, no worries, we'll just relocate it. All right. All right, so now I'm just gonna cut this duct tape. <clears throat> should just flake off, I'm sure it's old. Okay, so sometimes you got to take this piece out. You don't have to. I did. It was easier. Um, I just got to cut this back a little bit, about a foot. So, um, being that it wasn't screwed up there on top of the duct, uh, I just decided to take it off and cut it right here. So it'd be a little easier. Um, if you're going to cut these, you definitely need tin snitch, Okay, got to have tin snitch. Okay, so we eventually made it to our cut line. All right, we just cut a foot off. I don't recommend undoing the sleeve that's right here, this gap. Um, if you pop this off, these can be a pain in the butt to put back together. Um, you know, especially if you don't work with it all the time, you don't know the little, little tricks. But um, try to keep it intact, so just take your time. Um, I cut it at an angle and kind of just kept working my way up. But like I said, as long as you got tin snips, you'll be fine. All right, so since I just cut off the end piece, which looked like this, all right, this factory um, edge here, uh, these are designed to fit inside, right, like that. So uh, being that we cut this one off, now we're going to make our own. So we're just going to cut some uh, lines in here with the tin snips, so that way it bends in and it'll fit inside in here. So 
So you just wanna do this all the way around. All right, and then you just bend these tabs in and then that's just enough clearance to go inside of there, like that. Okay, usually I'll leave three tabs behind, so that way I can screw it back on. Okay, so that's the general idea. Um, and then we're gonna put our uh, NASA tape over the top and uh, we'll be good to go. It'll get rid of all this air. All right guys, this is 100% complete now. So we went underneath the truss and up to the subfloor. So we're finally done. We did it, buddy. Okay, and then the last thing to do is put this cover on. Now, really quick, if you look inside this duct, I have screws that are screwed into the subfloor. All right, so that way if, um, anybody's foot goes in here this doesn't collapse you know cause harm but yeah anyhow this is all secured all the way around with screws last thing boom that goes on everything looks great okay so everything's completed now just on a side note if you guys are interested on this kitchen remodel that i'm doing please subscribe hit that bell notification down below and you guys will be able to see everything that was done to this kitchen. This was a complete rip out. And we installed new can lights, uh, obviously new electrical plates everywhere, new cabinets, new flooring. So all this is gonna be on YouTube. So if you hit that bell notification, you will get notified when these come out. So that way um, you guys can rebuild your kitchens if you want, or just kitchen ideas. All right guys, so that concludes this HVAC video. I hope this floor register video was able to help you guys out. Um, if it did, great. If not, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe, support my channel. And if you already subscribed, thank you for supporting my channel. Really appreciate that guys. 
And uh, stay confident. You guys can do this too. You just got to, you know, apply a little bit of thinking to it and uh, get your hands dirty. We're bringing back the trades. Trust me. All right. I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.